Hello everyone, you're here with H, and the H today stands for who is she? If you spell it really wrong. Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? Because where did you find this money mule? Allegedly, from the original title anyway. <laughs> the money she be muling? The muling she be money? <laughs> Don't it? Don't you just love that you have to laugh with yourself because no one else will? To make yourself feel better. And if we package them both together, it is extremely laughable that in this thumbnail, she genuinely believes that he would love her. Whatever makes you feel better, baby. Whatever makes you feel better, baby. Let's dive in. This woman is scared and thinks she's in trouble. Catfish. And I didn't think nothing about it. After watching yo, Actually, maybe that not. was a big light going off. And that's what kind of got me worried. De uh, hold on, Drew. Just give a second for me to say what I have to say, man. Uh, my uncle has similar in, in the sense that he's had a stroke before. And one side of his face obviously can't move. So I'm wondering if she's had similar, or if she perhaps has Bell's palsy, if I pronounce that correctly. Just wanted to share that, I guess. Deborah has given a man she's David. never met in person access to all of her bank accounts. I was receiving money from people I didn't know through Zell, and then sending it to him. Nothing wrong Probably with between that. seven and ten thousand from them. She taking a cut? Of we don't know. Is. Maybe that's why she's still talking to him. The man she thought was her future husband has turned her life upside down. He looks Turkish. It's like it's a fantasy or a dream, like a fairy tale, like I'm writing a book. Uh, I've learned in a hard way people can say I love you and not really mean it. Join Facts. us as we turn the tables on this guy and give Deborah the truth about her internet boyfriend. Deborah. Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Go do that. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. We already are. Okay, guys. We have a new case. She says, my name is Deborah, and for six months I've been talking to a man by the name of David Toms. Before you go any further, isn't it crazy that she's being catfished by the guy who makes those boat shoe slip-on things? <laughs> you know those slippers that say Toms at the back of it? Hopefully you do, otherwise that makes no sense. He had me send money for what is supposed to be investors in his group and sent me money through Zelle to my checking account, which I sent to my cash app in Bitcoin and Actually, sent to him. I've only lost around $2,000, but I want to know who he really is. Uh, how about you give me $2,000 if you think it's just only $2,000, yeah? You put your toms on, you put your stupid boat slippers on, because we're about to head over to the Sea of Delusion. Deborah, get a grip of yourself. Hello, Social Catfish. My oh. name is Deborah. B roll. And I am 58 years old and I live in Virginia. Yeah, you know what? Shut up there as well. Too many freaking Virginias being mentioned recently. We've had Virginia, the victim. Now we've got Virginia, the state. Too many Virginias for my liking, to be honest. I also love the fact. Shut up, Deborah. Get back in there, and we're gonna stand out here and film you coming out because B roll, all right? And you'll like it. Also, wasn't it a thing that they just used to uh, film people like in and around California because that's where they are? We're in Virginia now. We're going international, baby, because Virginia is international. Or is it just a tax write-off? Hey, I didn't say it. My family, my kids, my grandkids, we just hang out here and do things around the house. And I just, you sit in there and watch them play. How about I sit here as you sit there and I just watch you do up ridiculous B-roll. Huh? Deborah, shut your mouth once again. I know this is extremely nonsensical and very <sighs> stop it get some help very concerning i'll tell you that much at how many times i have a brain fart 
but it's just funny. Just stand there, you know, solemnly look out into, I was going to say the sunset. It's grey as shit there. Are you in London? Are you in London, Virginia? The famous. Just stand there and, you know, look sad, I guess. We're doing up notebook scenes. Sit in there and watch them play video games and stuff like that. Woo! Feeling that love and that connection with all my kids. Doggies. And my That's what makes me happy. Woof. My first place I ever worked, I was 13, and I worked at Short Sugars. What a name. And that's where my mom and dad always had been working. I was basically raised in that restaurant. Yeah, g give me a second, yeah? Big breakfast, two eggs or two pancakes, one egg or pancake, tenderloin and gravy, the great big Janice, cheese omelette, the great big Janice. My, my. Chandler would not like that. Rest in peace, Matthew Perry. But short sugars, I'll raise you one better, yeah? Please, everyone, if I don't make a future restaurant named Tall Salts, then I've missed the trick in life. <laughs> this is great banter. It really is. I worked in the kitchen, doing the dishes, scrub, cooking, scrub. done just about anything in a restaurant. And I've always enjoyed it, working like with the public that way. And then I met my first son's daddy. That was supposed to be more like a, I guess a one night stand is what he felt like it would be. And I ended up getting pregnant with my son. So he went on his merry little way and I had my son on my own. And then when I was 24, I ended up marrying somebody that was like a friend to me. Well, that marriage didn't work. I had two boys. It lasted two and a half years. I had Patrick and Anthony. Two and a half year marriage as we just stare at this kid. Just great stock footage, guys. But two and a half years and you had two kids. Bro, you were like pregnant for most of the marriage, I guess. If if my biology is correct. That's just, I don't know. And then he just, well, whatever the case may be that it didn't work out. Uh, That's just interesting to me, I guess. The whole marriage, you just were pregnant. Moving like Rihanna. Because Rihanna apparently is always pregnant. Um, the first one, I've mentioned in a in a recent recording. I don't I don't think it will be released. Uh, it will be released afterwards. But I look at another story of Catfish where, uh, you know, the victim has a child with someone who she doesn't really like, I guess. But in this case... I, I think Deborah liked the first guy, but he just wanted it to be a one-time thing. Um, but I say in that episode, that's not released. I don't know if this is going to get flack, right? I don't know if people are going to hate on me for this. Maybe I'm just too old-fashioned, but... Me, personally, I think that's a that's a good example of taking better care of who you have sex with, right? I know accidents can happen... And at the end of the day, maybe in the moment you just can't control yourselves and you do up the deed and, and, and then you just have a baby, right? I get that. But in my opinion, anyway, I feel like people should take better care with who they choose to have sex with. Just because you end up having a child and especially with someone like this guy who obviously didn't even give a shit and he just ran away, which, by the way, I find that ab abhorrent in itself. You, as a father, you are a dad. I mean, this is where people draw up the differences. You're a dad or you're a father. You know, they, they do have technically two different meanings. If that makes sense. And I know Glory's mummy might be watching this and say... H, shut up with saying if that makes sense. I'm sorry. It slips out once in a while. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, basically what I'm trying to say is just take a bit more care with who you choose to have sex with. Or maybe that's just me. Or maybe I'm just too old fashioned. And when I was pregnant with Anthony, I left. And he wasn't a part of either one of them's life. Oh, you left. And I met my husband, Doug. It was a good marriage in the start. I had three more kids. They was good times in our marriage and there was bad times. The older the kids got, 
it's like I focus completely on the kids because he weren't physically abusive, but he was mentally abusive. You know, constantly putting me down and saying things that degrade me. And I just focused on the kids and didn't let it bother me. And then once they all got grown and started moving out, I felt like I was lost. Felt like I weren't needed, weren't loved. And it was just me and him, and it just got worse. We just got where we were roommates. We didn't sleep in the same room. We didn't sleep in the same bed. And, of course, he was cheating. You know, he cheat, found out he cheated all through the marriage. And I didn't really get upset about it because in my heart we were already anymore, yeah. divided. Well, we weren't together like we... Uh, my brain's trying to piece together this whole thing. I think it's been a few episodes now or maybe just the ones that I've been looking at, including the older ones, where the victims have multiple relationships, multiple marriages that for one reason or another, you know, people have just decided to move on or, you know, someone's been a scumbag, etc. It's just too many. Like, it's quite sad, to be honest. Now... Oh my god, have I ever mentioned I was cheated on? But I was cheated on, and obviously it's like scarred me for life apparently, because I bring it up a lot. But it it was a struggle for me to even, you know, consider finding another relationship. So, I mean, I've obviously got over that, or at least I think I have. But it is quite sad how many of these victims, I, I, again, you know, I feel like she's going to say the stereotypical, oh, I wasn't looking for a relationship. And I just, you know, I ended up in one. But I think these, a lot of these people just need therapy and not another relationship. It's not that new relationship that's going to make you feel loved. You need to work on yourself, Deborah. We weren't together like we should be as husband and wife. Also, uh, I kind of like this picture. Kind of cute. I don't know. Uh, this recent husband... Uh, the second one, I don't know what happened between them, right? She left him, so... I'm interested to know more. I feel like we've left out pieces of information on that part. Like, she didn't mention any abuse or anything, so maybe she just... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, the first guy, not really a relationship. He just dipped straight away. Piece of shit. Uh, and then this recent one, Doug or whatever the hell his name is, he he's dug himself a hole in my brain. And he's down there. I'm looking at him. You sack of shit. Cheating the whole way. Do things to yourself that I can't say on YouTube. Because demonetization. Hopefully, you know, she got some kind of therapy, but unfortunately, I don't think she did. So I'm 58 sad. now, and I spent half of my life with this man. And I felt like I gave him the best years of my life, and I feel like I don't have much left. No, I don't say that. I'm living with my son since my separation in 2022. I moved in with him. I said, I took a whole year. I didn't talk to nobody, I didn't get on the internet. A whole year, sit here in this room trying to heal from Doggy. two back surgeries last year. After two back surgeries and three failed marriages, Deborah found herself on disability and relying on her son for financial support. Okay, let's address a few things before we move on. Firstly, when she said she felt like she gave the best years to him, I understand that in a in a physical sense, right? Your physical age. As time goes on, you know, the prime of life type thing. I understand you gave your best years to him. However, I will say to anyone watching, the years are what you make it uh, to an extent, right? I mean, if if life is fisting you in the ass, well and truly, ouch! And I know that might be a bit crude for, for some people watching this, but... Come on, what other words would you describe it? When life is kicking the shit out of you, it does feel like you're being fisted. I, I know, I understand. 
sometimes life gets in the way like that. But for the most part, we make our own years, days, weeks. And if it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, I'll be there for you. When the rain starts to pour, I'll be there for you. Like I've been there before. <laughs> You're fake laughing too, right? All the tears are real. <laughs> so make life what you want it to be. And I, I know it can be difficult at times. I like to give myself a few moments, maybe an hour, to... If you're going to cry, cry. If you're going to be upset, be upset. But then pick yourself back up, keep moving. My cousin, for example, uh, recently passed away, if you do not know that. We had his funeral last Friday, and the guy that was giving the speech, and it is true, my cousin didn't want people to be upset, right? He lived his life. He made the choices that he made, and unfortunately, those choices ended up costing his life. But he was always the type of guy, pick yourself up, move on, and don't let things affect you too much because time doesn't wait. Life is already short. And it's why I don't take things too seriously, especially these videos. I know they're serious topics, but I think it's it's best, you know, let's have a bit of fun whilst raising awareness. Just because life is short. At least that's just my thinking on it. But let me know your thoughts. But secondly, after that very long ramble of something, firstly, I swear I hate the victims. You know, after everything I've just said, yeah? I hate when the victims, and I'm, I'm assuming here, use their disability allowance, I think that's what you call it, on the scammer who they've never met. Yeah, here's my money that I'm supposed to use for myself. Take it all. And then, you know, they'll end up crying that they have nothing for themselves, etc, etc. Or I especially hate when someone passes away, such as a husband, they leave the wife money. You know what? I'm going to piss it away on this new guy. Thanks. Anyway, let's carry on. While one day scrolling through Facebook, Deborah would meet a stranger named David who would change her life forever. I always been on Facebook because that's how I connect with a lot of my family. Okay. I'd pop in every now and then and there was something that somebody had posted and to finish watching the video you had to go to Instagram. What? I watched it and then I started scrolling through it and watching other videos and then I started getting people hitting me up in my DMs and oh, I started yeah. talking that way. And I just kept doing it and one day David just hit me in my DMs and we hit said hey up. to each other and just started Please. talking a little bit. He's got brown eyes, black hair, beard and mustache. Say close to six feet. Kind of a muscular built, maybe two hundred two. What have we blurred there? We've blurred his snail trail, apparently. Or the or the runway strip. Goodness gracious me. As I said in the beginning, Deborah, I understand you've been through a lot, and I understand you're very lonely. But goodness, come on, let's Get a grip of something, huh? How about I get a grip of the red flag? Now, I'm not saying it's not possible at all, right? But for the most part, everyone, please, once you get older, it is okay to understand that a, that a younger man or woman won't be interested in you unless you got the moolahs. Just saying pounds. He's a good looking man. Yes. Yeah, I'm attracted to him that way, but that's not the first thing of that attracts me. Of course it is. Mostly I look at a man's eyes. If he's got beautiful eyes, that gets my attention. Uh, doesn't someone's eyes count towards their overall attractiveness? You can, you've, you've spun this in a way to try and make it seem like you're not into his looks. They're not the main thing, but you can't fool me. Every single person on this show says that. 
Who are you fooling? Yourself? Because it's not me. It's not us. It's you, it's you that you're trying to fool. But let me know in the comments. Does someone's eyes count towards their attractiveness? Because I think it does. But with David, it was the way he talked. He made me laugh. Some of the videos he had posted and the videos that he sent me, he was being goofy and funny <laughs> and he made me laugh and stuff. And that's something I hadn't done in a long time. Watch me. Just then. his personality that really pulled me in. He speaks Spanish mostly, but he does speak English. Sure, he did call me a few times. Got to be on a regular basis. He said, my English ain't as good unless you really understand what I'm saying. And then when he finally did call me, I said, ain't nothing wrong with your English. Just slow down when you're talking. How are you doing? I'm okay, babe. I'm okay, well, I miss you. Do you miss me, sir? Yes. And it's kind of like a Mexican or something, the way he talks. He said he was born in Florida, but when he was just a small baby, like one or two years old, his parents moved back to Spain. Help me! Help me! When I said in a previous episode, we need to start alongside counselling sessions, we need to start giving these victim geography lessons as well, bro. Mexican. He sounds not only she she said he sounds like a Mexican because all Mexicans apparently sound the same, but he sounds like a Mexican. That's just I don't know. Applaud. Editing age here. I look kind of blurry right now but it's a metaphor for what's going on in Deborah's brain right now because I also want to touch on her saying that he sounds like a Mexican as he says that he was living in Spain because they are very close together Spain and Mexico if you didn't know like that like that right next to each other on the border on the precipice of each other Also, I think it's Florida that's being hit by like a crazy hurricane right now. So if you have evacuated or know anyone in that situation right now, sending you guys love and strength, that is, I assume, very, very scary. Like, it's not even an assumption. That's, I'd be shitting my pants. So if anyone is affected, uh, sending you guys love, hopefully you are able to get to safety. Uh, yeah, if you are, keep me updated in the comments. Let us know if you're safe and stuff. And he grew up there, and when he got older, he moved back to the States. And we talked about my kids. We talked about just about everyday things, how things was going, what we did that day. Every morning, all through the day, and then at night. I'd ask him how work was going. What's his work? You know, we talked about he lost his parents. He of don't course. have his parents no more. He told me he was from New Jersey, Sorry. which is like six, seven hours from here. And I kind of like that because he was closer by. Wasn't he Deborah Florida? wasn't looking to date online. She preferred to meet face to face. With David only a six hour drive away, she would talk to him by phone every day and every night. And quickly their feelings for one another grew. And he said the L word first, the hell he said word. he was falling in love, and I'm like, oh, really? And to me, it felt kind of fast, even though we'd been talking for quite a while. But to me, it's not real until I can see you face to face. Okay, fair enough. And you can tell me that, and I can see you saying those words. Okay. That's the way it is with me. But I went along with it. We talked about it. Uh, well. I spoke to him on the phone. So you went back on your own word then, huh? It's no good saying one thing in this call and then another thing essentially behind closed doors on text message. Come on now. Four times. Talking about being together that first night, our Whoa. first kiss, stuff like that. Chill out. He calls me his wifey. Oh. He wants to settle down and have a life Sorry. with me. He wants to buy a house close by here where I won't be away from my kids and grandkids. And talk about the house and stuff like that and being a family when he gets back. You know, meet my kids, my grandkids. And he was talking about asking me to marry him when he got back. But he wanted to talk to my kids first and get their permission before he asked me what to marry him. What a great him. guy. You know, just talking about having a family together. 
I mean, he even asked me to find a house that was close by here. He said, that way you'll still be close to all your kids. And that. I took that at face value and I didn't do anything. Well, he kept on to it. Every now and then he'd throw it up and ask me, did you check into any houses? You hadn't sent me none. So just to see what he's up to, I picked out the highest houses I could find. I mean, uh, you're talking about $800,000 houses. I had some that was in $200,000, $300,000. And he picks the big one, the one that's almost $800,000. i am like, What's are you job? crazy? And he knows I didn't come for money, and I'm, I'm not into big, elaborate things. We're two totally different that way. But then within three weeks of talking, he talks about he got a contract, and he ended up going back to Spain. David told me he was a contractor and engineer. He's building houses for the workers there that's working on some big project and his crew is building the houses and stuff that they live, they'll be staying in and he's been there ever since now with david headed to spain deborah would have to postpone their meeting in person however they did continue to talk daily by phone and continue to plan their future together there was just one problem i said okay we talked on the phone We've done all this other stuff, and I've asked him to video chat with me. And when I did it, it said it wouldn't, it couldn't go through because of the network, that there was something wrong with the internet connection. He never really asked for lots of money at one time, but I did send him a $50 Apple card to upgrade his phone. 50 That's bucks an on an Apple phone, card. Bro. I told him straight up when we started. You know, I said, I don't work. I'm disabled. I'm fixing to have back surgery. I don't have money. I live with my son. He supports me. Hoping that if that's what he was looking for, he'd walk the other way. David never asked Deborah for large amounts of money. Instead, he would ask her to help him with Bitcoin investments and other investors he claimed he was involved with. Do you know, I'll, I'll mention this just so that everyone is aware of this as well, which you probably already are anyway. But... If someone who you tell them, I don't have much money for whatever reason, and then they proceed to tell you, hey, invest, please, because I'm not a finance bro. Do you know what I mean? I'm not one of those crypto donnies. I ain't going to tell you to t spit shine a Bitcoin and do whatever the hell gets you excited with Bitcoins. But I don't think you should be investing if you don't have a lot to begin with. If you don't have disposable money, I beg you, do not go investing, bro. You, you will fall flat on your ass and wish you never did it in the first place. But that's just me. What do I know? I'm just a rat boy in a chair. But once again, if this guy truly loved you, wouldn't be asking you for this kind of thing. He'd let you be. Hey, keep your money, baby. You know? What he does on the side is investments. On the side, was over a month after we no started money. talking, and he was asking me to invest into bitcoins. I already knew about bitcoins and stuff like that. Uh, that's actually quite interesting that you know about bitcoins. I'm very intrigued as to how you know about this. Have you been scammed before? But also, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take investment advice from someone who can't afford a $50 Apple gift card for themselves. Just saying. And he said, I need help with my investors because I'm out of the state right now. And he, he told me to start up the Zelle account with the bank. And he was sending money to the Zelle account, to my bank account. And it was coming from different people. Sorry, let's go backwards. Because stat padding watch time, that's why. To the Zelle account. What Zell is that? You've spelt it as if it's a Disney princess or something, Drew. And I'm looking at Drew, because I know he edits these videos. Unless they've now changed and someone else edits this video. But I'm looking at whoever it may be editing this video. That's a Disney princess. My bank account. And it was coming from different people. And I asked him, I said, what are you doing? He said, it's investors sending money to invest, just like you did. He said, I just need you to withdraw it and put it in Bitcoin to send it to me. There were some big deposits, like 800, 500. And with them being that high, I was thinking it was investments. Because that's what I put in it. 
I was receiving money from people I didn't know through Zell and then sending it to him. Probably between seven and 10,000 from them. At first I was kind of convinced because I was looking at the total and not thinking. And I didn't think nothing about it. But after watching y'all and I seen about the checking accounts. Oh, and... I remember this woman. I think her name was Brittany or something. Yeah, the one who let uh, people hold her, her children for strange men. Huh? Strangers come into your house. Yeah, hold my child. No worries. <laughs> Great mother. Great mother. Mother of the year, some might say. But I will also say, and I think I said it in, in the commentary for this one, I urge everyone, before you do any sort of investing, even if you have the money available for it, bro, actually go and seek a professional in, in the... F <coughs> we have a problem! Bro, I started choking there. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't even get the words out. That's how much I am... That's how much investments drive me up the wall. Go see a professional, even if you are going to do it and have the money to do so. And and don't believe a random person from Facebook, bro. And money going through the checking account, and then you're oh. taking it out and sending it to them in Bitcoins. That was a big light going off, and that's what kind of got me worried. And, and what did you do about it? I finally got the nerve up to contact y'all. Not it's like bank? it's a fantasy or a dream, or anything? like a fairy tale, like I'm writing a book. I've learned yeah, in a can't. hard way. People can say I love you and not really mean it. Okay, we've repeated the same thing from the beginning, but it very much is a fairy tale, very much is a fantasy. I don't know what book you're writing, but if it's the, the book of batshit crazy, you're a bestseller, baby. You got New York Times number one bestseller. I learned that in my marriage. Okay, Seekers, yes, you know we had to get to the bottom of this. A few days later, of Brienne, course. David, and I got together Where to look the over the evidence Brutus. and see if we could help stop Deborah from sending or receiving any more money from David. By the way, I, I, you know, I've been meaning to say this, like, throughout however long I've been recording this now, yeah? Is this picture catfishing by her? Someone let me know in the comments, because I was initially looking at the eyes and thinking, they're not that color in real life, but they kind of do seem that color through the calls that we just saw. But like, I obviously, you know, I don't know if it's just you overloaded on mascara there. Maybe your, your wrinkles are less prominent. But let me know. I think this is a somewhat edited picture. And before anyone comments, you got wrinkles on your shirt. Of course, I wore it for a reason. Because I knew this story would not have been steam pressed. There's wrinkles everywhere. So I spoke to Deborah. She told me she smiling? has been allowing him to have access to her accounts. He logs into her PayPal. He logs into her Chase account, uh, a Zelle, just in and case Cash anyone doesn't He was know logging into flag. an account, sending money through Bitcoin to a bit. I don't care how close you are with someone. Everyone's going to do what they're going to do if you're comfortable with it, of course. But especially online, you've never met this person. Don't let them access your financial accounts, bro. I wouldn't even give my account for like ASOS. If you know ASOS, yeah, you know that website, ASOS, as seen on screen or something like that. How about at C of serendipity? Which is the... What the hell are you talking about? Then she would log on to a website and it would reflect, you know, whatever payment that she was sending to the Bitcoin wallet. She mentioned that he was taking money out of her account and was trying to move it. And PayPal blocked her and Good. even shut her account Good. down. And she was freaking out because he was getting upset and she didn't know what to do. Well, the bank, all in bro. all, I feel like Deborah just likes the way this man speaks to her. So she enjoys the chats. She enjoys the I love yous. She knows she has an issue, but she just can't cut him off for some reason. Addiction. So does he still have access to her accounts? Yes. Yeah. So she's accepting money from other people. She knows it's a scam. She knows who the real account is, Wait, what? but she continues to talk to him. She taking a cut? 
We don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you might have wanted to tell me beforehand so she knows where's this bombshell come from. She knows she's being scammed, which means can we excuse her being a money mule? It's not just like, oh, I didn't know. You're being scammed. And the fact that you've watched the video where Britney was full on a money mule Right? Should I feel sympathy? You, you're thieving. You're doing up thievery here. That's why she's still talking to him. Okay, so we have to get access to her PayPal. We have to look at the money that she's been receiving. Be hard? Just ask the money her. that she had been sending. Maybe she didn't lose 2000 maybe she lost more. We have to advise her to not accept any more money from people she doesn't know. Any funds that she has right now, she should be sending that back. I actually think we have a ton of work. What I say we do really? is we lock him out of all of the accounts, right? So there's the Zelle, the PayPal, the Chase. And so we got to get yeah. down to the bottom of Chase why she's accepting money. We introduce our fake banking website, see if we can get him to log in, get his IP address, find out exactly who he is, and then we'll confront him. All right, we'll get to the bottom of it. Confront who? Hey, Brian. Hey. hey. So I'm just touching bases with you before we meet with Deborah tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm just wrapping up her research right now, but it's weird. She just sent me David's driver's license, mm. and it looks fake. Looks so we'll then. see what happens after I run a reverse image search on the driver's license, and then hopefully we'll be able to reveal everything to her. Cool. Well, I'll be ready tomorrow. All right. All right. Nice. Now that he the just, team's come... He just walks out the room. <laughs> totally natural conversation, that. With a game plan, Brienne gave Deborah a call to get an update and see if we could get access to her PayPal account. Walk me through your activity on this PayPal. I see here Gloria. Who's Gloria? Okay, that's the one I told you I sent her money back to $138. She sent you $138. You refunded the $138, okay, and now she's requesting $400 more. Oh, no, no. Yes. And then what about Allison? No, same thing. Okay, so Allison is the same. And then what about Michael? Same thing. Same thing. So basically anybody in this PayPal account was directed to send you funds. Yep, send in funds to David. And you mentioned that your PayPal account was closed, so it looks like they reopened it? No, it's another PayPal account. Okay. Okay is not the right word I would use in this situation, Bree. If your PayPal account gets closed for whatever reason, surely alarm bells are ringing, no? Surely a red flag is popping out of your face. You know, in the cartoons when a gun shoots and the red flag comes out, surely that is right in front of your face and you're saying to yourself, hold on a second here, I've done a no-no if my account is being blocked by PayPal themselves. F it, I'll make another one because my lover said so. It's just so, you know, stinky of desperation, isn't it? I hope everyone can find it within themselves to be content enough by themselves so that when any Tom, Dick or Harry comes to you and starts spewing out nonsense, do this, do that, do the hokey and you shake around. That was absolutely butchered. I remixed it, though. You will have it within yourself to be like, I don't need this shit. F you, mother bitch, and carry on your life. Hopefully. Please do seek professional support if you do feel like you are not content within yourself. Don't lose your money, peeps. Do you have another PayPal account? Yeah. And then my Chase account got closed out. Okay, so that there was a first citizen bank. Don't know what you're talking about, but you're a criminal citizen at this point, Deborah. PayPal account got closed, I'll open another one, you know, sure. We'll chalk it up, you're moving a bit brazy, to be honest. Which is slang, by the way, in the UK. Brazy, with a B, basically is crazy, with a, with a C. Don't ask me why the hell there was a need to put the B in front of it. We were going too far along the alphabet. A, B, C? No! Change that shit to be brazy. Anyway, it's brazy enough as it is to to 
have your PayPal account blocked by PayPal. But then your bank, like a big bank, big chase, bro. They don't have time to be chasing you around, Debra. But apparently you think it's a game of hide and seek. Oh, oh, you got me. Which is not hide and seek. The, the scammer's playing hide and seek with you. You're playing tag with Chase. Oh, you got me. But it's just a shame that you will never get me again. Let's get a grip of ourselves. I've hit this microphone too many times now. I'm sorry. The first citizen bank. Now it's the one I had for 10 years. The true bank got closed because the day that he saw a check for 2000 or something. So they you don't, said the check you don't care, authorized. you're just carrying on. If we were to access the other PayPal account, well, would we be able to view the transactions and the activity? Yes. This scammer had the logins to Deborah's Chime account, both of her PayPal accounts, and he even knew the pin to her bank account. He was having money mules send money to her accounts and then move the money to his accounts. Also worth noting that if these were legitimate investments, I don't think they would be occurring on apps like PayPal. But I could be wrong, let me know in the comments. And also, if they were legitimate investments, your accounts wouldn't be blocked. The first thing that we did was change all of the Debra passwords on money. every account Deborah had, so the scammer could no longer log in. If you're looking to contact us and you think you might need our help finding out who you're communicating with online, or maybe you need help breaking through to a friend or a family member, don't hesitate to reach out to our email, share my story at socialcatfish.com. We can help you find the answers line. you've been looking for. After a few days of gathering evidence, we sat down with Deborah to give her the cold hard facts about the profile she was corresponding with claiming to be David. Cold hard. Hello, Deborah. Good to see you again. Hello. Oh, First, what a how are you we doing? Got there? I've had four surgeries on my neck and just went to the third one on my back. Oh. I told David about my True, situation that just... I was disabled because of some back issues. Doesn't that just seem like such a, like, forced? Oh. Okay, maybe I'm a bit too sarcastic there, actually. So I'll slap myself for that. But I love the fact that she's got a setup here, yeah? But there is also a camera filming her at the same time it's just very interesting that we're filming her i don't know why the dog is also looking out the window just as deborah was looking out from her por porch earlier on in this episode the dog is thinking shit man i ain't had any kibble bro she been giving the money to david i got no food but it's so cute look at the one on the left just like weren't working he was very supportive talking about how he you know wished he could be here and then he would pray and that he does big things would turn out okay are you still believing that david is real today that's a good question so, um, so you know deep down inside i've done said that it's not okay, did he reveal any new information to prove that he is who he says he is basically her answer there is her saying I still love him. Thank you. Not really. And that's what I don't understand why I'm holding on to that little 5%. There you go. It's funny that you already have described this as a romance scam, yet you still have some kind of hope. What's the reason why you, you are holding on to this? Yeah, he's promised a lot, you know, when he gets back. Us picking up and being together and stuff like that. Even when I tell David no, he doesn't get angry over it. And that was surprised me. Even when I tell him I can't, you know, do this or I can't do that, he doesn't get angry. Yeah, because this is actually one of the more uh, better, you know, quotation marks, scammers. The ones who don't so quickly jump into rage. He obviously has done this probably for a long time then. Because that's the sign, right? You can see the manipulation tactics a bit more advanced, you know? But I really, really hope that 
she'll come to grips of things, get a grip by the end of this, but I unfortunately don't think so. I think that's what it is, the understanding and him being so nice about it and not blaming me and getting mad and trying to force me to do it. After everything, Deborah was still holding on to David being true. Whatever. It was time to give her the truth. This needed to come to an end. So let's talk about the New Jersey driver's license that he sent you. I said, you say you can't video chat. I said, then send me a driver's license, passport, because I knew you could see if they were fake for real. So I asked for them. We ran this driver's license through our reverse image search, and I found some interesting things. The expiration date, it's missing the appropriate format. The two digit month, the two digit day, the four digit year. And so it's missing one of those digits. And then also I looked at the address that was listed on the driver's license. It led back to some sort of commercial retail building. There's a nail salon, there's a restaurant. It's not even a residential address. Okay. The next thing I wanted to share with you. I don't want to be too hard on her. Do you know what I mean? But surely she could have searched the address herself. Like it was literally there. So that's sad. Huh? You know, she said she knew about Bitcoin even before this scam. But you don't know how to do a simple Google search. Let's not take the piss here, please. Too many victims recently have come on this show wasting the catfish team's time, wasting my time, wasting everyone's time. You think I don't have anything better to do, huh? You'd be correct, because I don't. But surely let's get a grip of ourselves and get some better victims, bro. Quote, unquote, better victims. By that, I mean victims who don't understand a shitting thing, right? They have no technology, savviness, anything like that. And, you know, they were so desperate, they fell for a scam. Yes, the common sense is lacking. But at least it's, it's a victim who I can have some sort of sympathy for, I guess. Is the signature. Oh. I actually found a match using social catfish reverse image search. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh. So this does not belong to David at all. The signature he took from this article online and he photoshopped it and created the driver's license that he had sent to yeah, you. Yeah, by the way, if you genuinely get a uh, any sort of ID and the photo looks like this, like the, the photographer didn't even tell you, hey, let's let's line this up properly. No, we're just going to take it as if we've taken this picture on the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Sure. Nice. So this is a fake. That's what I asked for. Ooh, I okay. Passport, driver's license, anything that can identify you as being you. Well done. Did you find anything out on the phone number? When I ran the phone number through our reverse phone number search, I found that it was a VoIP phone number. Give me a second, yeah. Let's, uh, I love the fact that we've switched camera angles, by the way. We've set up a, now the camera is pointed directly at her feet. What's going on, guys? I don't understand. I get production value, but sometimes I think it's just a bit too much. Which is an internet online number. Surely she watched So we episode. ran all she the reverse this. image searches of him, and you sent over a ton. I think you yeah. sent like 20, 30 images of this guy. And what we were able to confirm through reverse image search, this person in the picture, his name is not David Toms. The real man in the image, his name is Richard. Aesthetic injector. What the hell does that mean? Richard is a nurse in Miami. Uh, he said that was... His profile that he used to so use. he does like Botox and stuff. That's the name he went by when he was living in Spain. Why would he and he that? grew up there in Spain. The police. The police are coming. Maybe they can answer the question. Why would he need to change his name 
to David when he moved to America. They don't like Richards in America, huh? They don't like dicks. <laughs> when he got older, he moved back oh. to the United States and changed his name. Oh. Wow. Okay. Hold up, Seekers. Deborah was already aware that this man's official profile existed. Yet, she was still communicating with the fake profile of David that. and helping him move money. This was a problem. We needed to make sure she understood that the real man in these images had nothing to do with this. I just realized that. She's so Mr. Krabs, I am so confused. This guy, Richard, he's not David. They're two totally different people. The person that you're communicating with just- By the way, you know it's a red flag. The fact that all these recent victims watch the show, but still learn nothing. So- Stole all of his images and sent them to you. Would you like to see his profile would you like to go through it with us okay this is richard's official tiktok here a lot of the pictures in his social media account are the exact images that the person you're talking to has sent you david has nothing to do with this account you understand that yeah. right okay yeah I know that. but then you're still communicating with this person did you feel like you really needed to reach out to us to verify it for you yeah because even though I knew it, it had to be there, proof that everything was fake. Basically, I need you guys to wipe my ass as well because I can't do it. I've said this way, way long ago now. It's concerning that these people need catfish to hold their hand and walk them through everything. I feel sorry for you, like in the sense that I'm concerned that other aspects of your life, you can't get through it, perhaps without someone to essentially, you know, dangle a carrot in your face and say, look, it's fake. You get it? It's concerning. I don't like the victims who do this, man. They know it, but they need, they need the team to tell it, right? It, 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 it smells a bit like promotion, right? Look, we're Superman to these people, so use our service. So I'm saying everything was, that he's completely fake. <sighs> She's waffling now. That everything much. that I was thinking in mean, my gut was real. This scammer had access to Deborah's PayPal account and was actively using it to send and receive money. Yeah. We sent a link that looked like a PayPal payment to this fake profile of David, and he clicked on it. But, unfortunately, they were running a VPN. This person has access to your PayPal account, so they're moving money on your behalf. If you do not close this account and cut this guy off and get him out of your account, the FBI can come to your door, not this she, guy that you're talking to be on the profile. They're going to come to your door because it's your name she on watched it. the videos. And so this person that you're talking to, he's putting you in a really bad position. And I've even brought that up to him, you know, that I've looked over the account and I've seen how many people have really sent money through there. You know, it's pissing me off how many times she's saying I've brought this up to him. Yeah, I know that. But you're still here in this position. So once again, as I said earlier, you're saying one thing in the calls, but you're doing a completely different thing behind closed doors on text message. I don't think you actually care. I think you're getting a cut, bro. Like, I think she actually is a willing money mule. The fact that she doesn't work, the fact that she is going through all these surgeries, it's easy money for her. Allegedly. You know, question him whether he was scamming people and running it through me. Or if it was just the investment, like he said. Didn't I feel like question. you're holding on to this because he's being nice to you. No. It makes sense on why he's so nice to you. You're going to continue to do that because you're going to continue to send money. He never really asked me for a lot of money. And he had even sent money to me for me in my, what, 
Chase bank account. Man, else's when money. it got closed, it, before it got closed a few days before, he said he was sending me money to help me out. And um, they you can hear the shakiness in her voice because she feels like they are on the verge of catching her out. I had a Chase account and he would just put it into my account. You came to us to verify all of this and our answer for you is that this is a romance scam. This is not real. We're stamping it. This is a romance scam. You you need to block him and you need to get rid of him completely. Most of the people that I found out that were scammers had offered, asked me to go to WhatsApp, you know, Instagram, everything else. He never moved it like that. We were on TikTok when we met and he asked me if I had a Facebook so we could share pictures. And we talked mostly on Facebook until all of a sudden this past month his facebook got broke down okay his facebook broke down i don't know what mark zuckerberg is doing up in that spaceship of his but facebook is breaking bro sure it's too late can't help her waste of my time waste of your time waste of the catfish's time the dogs they're all looking out the back now they're all looking out the window they're trying to escape there's no other question about it this is a shitting waste of time that's when we, I already told him I had Skype, and that's when we moved over to you know, Skype. Crazy. You have Skype. Yeah. Didn't he didn't tell you to Skype. go to where other scammers asked their victims to go. The red flag was that he said my uh, Facebook account has been shut down. He didn't get on a video chat with you. He's asking you to send money. Like, all these red flags were there before. and. And, you know, I love that you, you felt comfortable to come to us and we were able to look into this information for you. But no. I think there's some concern there that you weren't able to block this person in the beginning and get this person out of your life because all the red flags were there before you even came to us. Right. Yeah, well, right, but also left as well. Everything has gone left. Shit's gone left because whilst I appreciate Bree still trying to maintain some kind of niceness about the situation i wouldn't phrase it as i love the fact that you were comfortable to come to us because she's come here to ask for your help but with your help is doing nothing about it if she's still going to continue to speak with the scammer why are you here like genuinely how many victims in a row now is it I, like it's actually pissing me the f Flip off, yeah? Too many recently. I, I swear it's like a string of four or five now. The victims are coming on this show. For what? To go on YouTube, bro? To have like one minute of fame. Do you know what I mean? And most of the time, it's not even good fame. It's infamy. People are slewing you in the comments, bro. Don't think I don't see it. People are harsher than me. That's, that's saying something. So... I just can't, this is why I say, are there no victims left who genuinely you can feel some sympathy for? I, I don't believe there's none left, bro. I know we're doing this for YouTube. Let's get the ones that are controversial, drive engagement up. But can we like sprinkle it in? Yeah, where's like bloody, uh, pff, where's Suzanne, right? From the middle of bloody some small village in like south dakota or something yeah where is where's she where is she <laughs> i was hoping you would get something on the tracker before i close them out because if that. he checks it you don't need you don't need it you're basically saying i need you guys to give me a free colonoscopy as well so that i know i have shit inside me that's what you're saying. An IP tracker, neither do we, to, to get rid of this guy and understand that he's a romance scammer. He, we don't need his IP address to know what he's up to. Deborah was starting to see the truth, Is but it? she was still making excuses for this scammer. So we may not have been successful with getting the scammer's location, but we could definitely identify the accent they had. Brienne was able to get Deborah to film her conversation with David, and here's what she heard. So, Bray? Yes? Bray, I want you to log on to the PayPal I sent you. Then you log into the new PayPal I sent to me yesterday. 
the one you had on your phone before. I want you to log in his back again. Are you listening? Okay. So when you're looking back to it, just click on the cash app balance, then you scroll down to transfer. Once you click on the transfer, it's going to show in a minute. Then once you click on it, the money is going to add on your cash app. I want you to do that now. So, okay. That's a West African accent. But even in this phone call, it sounds like he's directing you to do more illegal things. Yes. Yeah. Well, but you said, know he's... Man said, yep, twirled her foot. Yes, yeah, scratched her foot. Get a grip. Get a damn grip. Like how you got a grip of your foot? Get a grip of the situation. How dare you have the audacity to sit there and say, yep, yeah. <laughs> He's not real. Like you, you had his Instagram page, and then you also had his TikTok. You know what the real guy sounds like in the real videos. Yeah. You. I, t I completely freaking forgot about that because I'm so heated. You are obviously. Surely you would have heard this guy's real accent before, and you you don't say to him, "Hey, person who sounds Mexican to me for some reason, uh, why do you sound different in your TikToks? Are you an impersonator?" Is that what you do? You have to stop this. You can't keep going. It's, eyes are gonna it's like not explode. real. You got to give it up. Well, after we've shared everything about David, what are you going to do with him? Because it's this not guy's not his name is not David. He's not the guy in the picture. He's not Richard. So, I mean, what we like to call this person is um, a jerk. Like a liar, Jerk, a scammer. A liar, yeah. scammer. So what? <laughs> uh, I know she used to work at Short Sugar, but you're you're definitely sprinkling sugar on what you actually want to say. Piece of shit, bastard, dirty bitch. All appropriate words to describe a scammer. What are you gonna do with the scammer? Nothing. Block him. Cap. I want him to. Cat. Get rid of his access to your bank accounts, your PayPal account. He, you need to get him off of everything. PayPal account is the only thing you've got now. Oh. You got to change your password. You have to That's get okay, rid then. of it or close that account. Mm -hmm. You did fantastic. But you would and I wouldn't have found what I did if I hadn't watched y'all and y'all hadn't have taught me how to do it. So y'all definitely helped me. And that's why I come forth was so that other people would watch the videos, learn, and do it like I did. Uh, do it like I did. What is that? Shit on everything that they're saying and still believe the scammer is real? I don't... Do what like you did. Don't do what she did, everyone. If you continue to talk to people online, not a problem. Shoot me a text right away. Send me their social media profile, their image, and I'll do some digging for you. Okay. And I will tell you if this person's real or worth Deborah's time or not. <laughs> okay. Sounds like a deal. All right, Deborah. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you so much. Great meeting with you today. And then we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. Well, have a great day. Bye, Deborah. Yeah. yeah, we'll be seeing you soon to take back the camera. Our team successfully changed all of her passwords. We informed everyone who was sending money on David's behalf that they might be a part. Deborah has committed to cutting off all communication with the fake profile, vows to never send or receive money from anyone online ever again. Right before blocking the David profile, we sent him this message. Hi, David. My name is Drew. Hi, David. My name is Brianne. It's been nice chatting with you on Deborah's Skype account. We completely locked all of Deborah's accounts down, changed the passwords, so you will no longer be able to funnel any more money through her accounts. We've also reached out to every single person that she's been receiving money from, and we've notified them of this activity. So, f you, and please leave Deborah alone. If you have been involved in a romance scam, don't forget to report it. It helps get the word out and potentially stops other people from being scammed. Tomorrow, come hang out with our team at 3 p.m. Pacific time. We'll get an update from Deborah and hear how she's dealing with the aftermath of this romance game. You can find the link to our live stream on our YouTube channel by clicking the live tab. And yeah, I know. And now we'll throw it 
to TTH to do up tantalizing triple comments. So I'll see you in a jiffy. Hello everyone. Tantalizing triple time. Are you ready, baby? <laughs> and if you're new here, it's basically we look at three comments from the original video and just talk about it a bit because I love to talk and give my opinion on things because definitely someone asked. We have Cat Nip Patrick. What a name. And their and they use and their profile picture is like of a loading thing on like videos and stuff. Was Deborah's brain loading at any point? <laughs> Lady, you got a loving son, grandchildren, and three puppies. Focus your love on them, not some young dude who, or when you yourself have no money, living at your son's mobile home, being on disability. It's very true, let's be honest here. And I think everyone knows this. There is so many aspects of her life, people in her life, the little perps in her life, that you just, you can't fathom, right? And you can't fathom what? Can I finish the sentence? You can't fathom the attention being directed elsewhere when there is people already showing her love in real life. And I see this a lot, even, I say even, but in relationships in general, where... You know the stereotypical, you know, you love someone, they don't love you back. Then you love someone else, then that person originally who you loved, then they start loving you. What is this thing in life where we love people who don't love us back? Now, I'm guilty of that. Obviously, I was cheated on, so clearly she didn't love me back in the day. So, it's strange, isn't it? I'd like to think I've learned my lesson and hopefully that never happens again. But it's concerning to me and I will hopefully, at the very least, hopefully everyone can learn that it is okay to not chase a relationship. Love those around you right now. The right person who actually wants to meet you will come to you at the right time. And in an instance like this, you can't tell me she wasn't just chasing looks, right? When obviously this guy wasn't showing her any love other than making empty promises. But she was already too far gone. Do you know what I mean? And another concerning part comes from O2 Sale. She's living in her son's mobile home on disability and says that $2,000 isn't much money. That's almost worse delusion than thinking that a young hunk is in love with her. My point exactly. And I also made the point that she's obviously sending her disability money, right? But the fact that her son is taking care of her Spending his money to obviously buy food, pay the bills, etc. And essentially, you're pissing all over that. And you are not helping him out. Let's be honest. What's the likelihood she's helping him out with the bills, etc.? Let's say, come on, put the figures in the comments. I'm guessing 0.1%. But she'd rather send it to, to some random hunk of a guy. For what reason? You guessed it. Looks. It's greed as well. You think... By the way, I don't think any of her relationships in the past, they looked like the scammers' pictures. You know, muscly, etc. Young. So, wh wh where do you think... Where? What road are we on here? We're not following the yellow brick road at this point anymore. You know, the yellow brick road all the way to the castle or something like that. We we are on quicksand. The, the road is made of quicksand and you're a greedy little shit, aren't you, Deborah? By the way, I don't believe her that she's not taking a cut or she didn't know what she was doing, etc. 
I believe she did. But let me know in the comments. And then lastly, for the third comment, we have Channel 3. <laughs> who sometimes watches, uh, watch, watching, watches the channel. So shout if you are watching this right now. She had previous failed relationships where the partnered lied to her partners. But she was surprised that the scammer lied also. That in itself is confusing to me. When in real life, so obviously you've been lied to. And very shitly, by the way. Now, I did see a comment about, you know, we need to talk about her judgment, we'll call it, with choosing men. In the fact that she had the one night stand, had a child, had a two year marriage and essentially was pregnant throughout the whole thing, having two children. And on one hand, I mean, I get it in terms of the one night stand aspect, because I mentioned similar, you know, just choose who you have sex with a little bit better. And a one night stand gives me reason to believe that you had just met and, hey, let's have sex on the first day of knowing each other. So in that aspect, definitely, in my opinion, have better judgment. But for the marriage, I'm not sure. She didn't say he was abusive or anything, and he obviously walked out. Or no, she left him. So again, I'm interested to see that. But the third one, you know, cheating bastard and all that stuff. So obviously they lied to her. You know, she's faced it multiple times. Editing age here. I realized I didn't even answer the point I was trying to make. So as I was talking about that comment I saw where people are, or the commenter was judging that her choice in men is bad and stuff, had quite a few thumbs up. But let's not just chalk it up to her having a poor choice in men. Because whilst I understand it on one hand, you know, me being old fashioned, you can hate on me in the comments in, if you want regarding the one night stand. I think, yes, you should choose who you have sex with better because you'll have a one night stand. As we've seen, you have a baby with someone you barely know. You don't know if they actually want a baby. You don't know if even if they're a good person. I'm sorry. I don't know how you can figure that out from a one night stand if that person is good or not, but I don't think you can. Then you're obviously in a situation, you're raising a child as a single parent, which is difficult in itself. And yeah, I I, I believe that's poor judgment on her part, but yeah, hate me in the comments if you want. But overall, right, especially in the marriages, that first marriage... We don't even know what happened. Why did she leave? Uh, the second marriage. Cheating bastard. Do you know what I mean? So is that her fault that he was cheating? I don't think so. So we need to actually lean more so, or at least I lean more so into blaming the men in the, in the, in her life for obviously being dickheads. But that's my thinking on it. Let me know in the comments. So why was it a surprise? It is very interesting that she wouldn't believe this guy could lie to her. Which, full circle. What's the reasoning that you decided to stick around? Either you're getting a cut of this money and you're just not saying it. Or the fact he's very good looking and completely in a different league. And you want to take your chance. Maybe it's real. Do you know what I mean? So. And for spoilers. You, you've all. Let's be honest. You've seen the live stream probably right. I glimpsed it. When I went on the home page. To look for the video. And go on the comments. The, the live stream is titled. That she refuses to block the scammer. What did I say in the main commentary bro? Now, unless they didn't change the title and maybe they've just made a mistake and it's a title from another one. Oh my God. 
Thank you for wasting my time, Debra, and everyone else's. Just F, yeah? F everything about this. Get a victim on this show, for the love of God, that's actually wanting help, bro, because I've had enough of it. I would say now nah, I'm going to throw it back to recording H, but I actually stopped recording and, and filming this. So for once... I've actually done it correctly. So the main point in all of this, one, if you are in a position where you are going through multiple failed relationships, right? Please recognize you don't need another relationship. Au contraire, you might need therapy to learn to love yourself and be by yourself. It's okay. Secondly, if you dare, basically defecate in the mouth Z, in brackets there might be multiple people taking care of you if you dare do that and sp send your money to a stranger rather than help out around you know with the people who are actually taking care of you allegedly you're a piece of shit and thirdly look after the dogs look after the puppies man they're looking out the window they're probably seeing the great horizon, the, the, cloudy, the cloudy skies of London, Virginia, and they want out. They haven't had their food. They, they're being fed cardboard because you've pissed all the money on investments. See you guys next time. If you want to watch more, they'll be up there as always. If you want to watch something else scam related, it'll be down here if you haven't seen it. I'll see you next time. Much love, everyone. Bye. Now someone send me $2,000 because it's only $2,000.